Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Abdelkader Ashur. Again, we are going to talk about the treatment of one of the most common neurological disorders, which is Parkinsonism. We will, uh, in the beginning, we'll talk about the definition of Parkinsonism, its etiology, and the clinical features. Then we'll talk about the classification of anti-Parkinsonian drugs and the aim of treatment. Okay, Parkinsonism. It refers to symptoms of Parkinson disease, which includes uh, tremors, rigidity, slow movements, as we'll discuss later. It's progressive. It gets more common with age. As you age, your probability of getting Parkinsonism increases. And it occurs in about 2% of the elderly population and most commonly in the seventh decade of life. As you see here, this is kind of what they call stooped uh, posture when the patient is kind of curved to the front, okay? And uh, the most important clinical feature is the resting tumors. And there is a shuffling gait where the patient uh, like drag his or her feet on the floor, okay? And with the small steps also. Okay, in details, uh, they are kind of, uh, have this pneumonic trap, which, uh, which collect the most, the most important uh, clinical features of Parkinsonism. T stands for tremors, R stands for rigidity, A stands for akinesia, and P stands for postural instability. Uh, tremors, as I said before, resting tremor is very important. It occurs during rest, okay? So it's involuntary shakiness, okay, mostly in the hand, okay? And it's kind of, it looks like pill rolling tremor. So it's kind of, you are holding a pill or a tablet of a medication, and you are rolling this tablet. It's kind of like that. This is how it appears. It's suppressed by intentional movement. You carry something or if you shake hands with someone, if you bend on a bench or whatever, it will stop. And also stops during sleep. The second clinical feature is rigidity. Uh, it increases it's increased in resistance to passive movement, movement. Normally, when you move a hand or an arm of a normal person, uh, passively, just ask him or her, just don't resist. It will go very smooth, right? right? The, uh, PD patient, when you try to move passively like that, it will go through stalls, like there will be some resistance to go like that, and then stall another movement, and then stop, and then, so it will be these stalls, okay, of movement. It will be difficult uh, for the movement. And uh, this also, uh, the rigidity is responsible for the stooped pick the posture, as we have seen in the previous figure, abnormal gait, and expressionless face of PD patient. Unfortunately, they lack expression. There is there what's called mask face. You don't see expression of happiness, sadness, whatever, all look similar. The third one is akinesia or bradykinesia. Akinesia is impairment of uh, the uh, power of voluntary movement and uh, bradykinesia is the slow movement. Uh, it's responsible, again, for walking with the shuffling gait, as we said in the previous figure, and small steps. Uh, with the, if the disease progresses more and more, the uh, late feature include postural instability, which may lead to loss of balance and may even fall. Uh, etiology includes, uh, generally it's idiopathic. We don't know exactly the, the, the main reason for this disease. but uh, uh, there are other uh, etiologies include genetic etiology, uh, atherosclerosis, mainly arteriosclerosis, long-term use of drugs uh, such as dopamine, uh, drugs that deplete dopamine stores such as lizerpine. If you remember, we talked about it during, when we talked about the sympatholytics. Uh, drugs which decrease the response of dopaminergic receptors uh, such as uh, antipsychotics and the anti-emetic drug metoclopramide. Uh, syphilis, carbon monoxide poisoning, viral infection, which can destroy the basal ganglia, which is the uh, place 
where the dopamine, dopamine is uh, uh, produced in the brain and prolonged exposure to insecticides. Okay, now the pathophysiology. It's a motor disorder due to imbalance between the inhibitory dopaminergic activity and the excitatory cholinergic activity. Okay, so you need to have such a balance between these two. The movement initiates with the dopaminergic neurons and there will be after that a balance between the both arms, dopaminergic and cholinergic. If, uh, if there is a degeneration of neurons in the substantia nigra, which is the part of the basal ganglia that produces dopamine, uh, there will be less of dopamine, and then the acetylcholine will be dominant, or cholinergic uh, uh, activity, generally speaking, will be dominant, okay? So the aim of treatment is to enhance dopaminergic activity and or decrease the cholinergic activity. Uh, it's simplified here, this is the normal balance. Here is the cholinergic, here is dopaminergic. There should be a balance between them. In the Parkinson patient, there will be a damage or degeneration of the substantia nigra neurons. There will be a loss of uh, product production or decreased production of dopamine. And this will allow the acetylcholine or cholinergic activity to be dominant. And this will be responsible for the clinical features of uh, Parkinsonism. Uh, what you need to do for treatment is to, number one, give dopaminergic or enhance the dopaminergic activity exactly by uh, levodopa or enhance the dopamine re release or use drugs that stimulate dopaminergic receptors or drugs that inhibit the degradation of dopamine or use anticholinergic, central anticholinergic such as benzotropy. This will bring us to the final slide of this first part of this lecture, which is the classification of anti-Parkinsonian drugs. I would like all of us to start with L-DOPA. It's the immediate precursor of dopamine. Okay, so in the beginning down here is not shown the uh, uh, tyrosine amino acid. If you add one hydroxyl group to tyrosine, it will be L-DOPA. And then if you decarboxylate L-DOPA, it will be dopamine. Dopamine will activate dopamine receptors, which can resolve the clinical features of Parkinsonism. So uh, the, the, this is the normal pathway. The mnemonic of drugs used for Parkinsonism to make it easy for you is C. Dallas. Go to Texas, USA, and C. Dallas, okay? So C stands for COM, catechol-O-methyltransferase. Again, we talked about it when we talked about the metabolism of uh, uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine or catecholamines. So this also can degrade L-DOPA and dopamine. So if you use COM or catecholol methyltransferase inhibitor such as intercapone or uh, tolcapone, this is the first drug class of drugs, which is the C. Okay, number two is dopamine. Okay, can we use dopamine itself? No, because dopamine cannot pass through the cell, the blood-brain barrier. Cannot pass through blood-brain barrier. So what we need to do is to use the immediate precursor, which is L-DOPA. L-DOPA is uh, uh, it's coming directly from tyrosine, it's similar to tyrosine, just one extra hydroxyl group. So it can trick the blood-brain barrier and pass through the uh, L-amino acid transporter and uh, pass through the blood-brain barrier where it converts inside the substantia nigra uh, using the, uh, by the enzyme DOPA decarboxylate into dopamine which can activate the dopaminergic receptor. Uh, however, this L-DOPA could be also converted into dopamine in the periphery, which can be responsible for the side effects of dopamine. We'll discuss them later. So we need to use peripheral dopa decarboxylase inhibitors, okay, such as carbidopa and ben, ben, benzirazide, okay. So uh, again, uh, the number one, the catechol o methyl transferase. Number two is the dopamine. We don't use the dopamine itself. We may use drugs that, uh, that enhance or activate dopaminergic receptors, such as bromocryptin, pergolide. These are ergo uh, derivatives or non ergo derivatives like bramipixol and rupi uh, neuro. Uh, these can activate dopaminergic receptors, but we don't use dopamine. As I said, we use, we can use uh, amantadine that can facilitate the release of dopamine or use L dopa itself. But as I said, L dopa could be converted in the periphery into dopamine. So then we use 
peripheral decarboxylase receptors such as cardiotopa, uh, benzirazine, to prevent l dopa from being converted into dopamine in the periphery and allow more and more of l dopa to pass through the cell membrane, the blood brain barrier, and be converted into dopamine and in the brain. The uh, L dopa, the A is anticholinergic, central anticholinergic, such as benzotropine. S stands for silicon, which is now monoamine oxidase inhibitor, uh, which also they can degrade dopamine, so are inhibiting this uh, this enzyme, so are inhibiting the degradation of dopamine. You are replenishing the amount of dopamine in the substantia nigra, and you can activate the dopamine receptors and. Uh, control the clinical features of Parkinsonism. Uh, this brings us to the end of uh, this part of uh, anti-Parkinsonian drugs. I will see you soon. And the uh, second part, I hope you enjoyed this part. See you later. Have a wonderful day.